A man took a picture of his wife on their boat. Then he spotted something floating in the ocean. Bruce and Robin Necht from Odessa, Florida were celebrating their joint birthdays with another couple, Michael and Sean Saar, as they did every year. For the annual event, they took their boat out into the Gulf of New Mexico to admire the sun and sea. But what they didn't expect was that this particular trip would end in tears. The foursome had traveled a few miles out and was about to begin the birthday festivities in earnest. The sun was about to rise, the champagne was cooling, and it was shaping up to be a spectacular day. The water calmly lapped at the hull, and there wasn't a soul to be seen. Nothing could ruin this occasion, or so they thought. After a few hours of watching the sun travel lazily to its highest point, Bruce whipped out his rod and cast his line. Being an experienced fisherman, he expected to reel in something that they could cook for lunch when they returned to the shore. Little did he know he wouldn't be returning with just a fish. It wasn't long before Bruce felt a bite. He expertly reeled the fish in and was pleased to see that it was quite sizable. He rushed to fetch his camera so that he could snap a picture of his catch while his wife Robin posed in the background. She smiled, unaware of what was going on behind her, but Bruce saw it through his lens and did a double take. Bruce zoomed in with his camera to try and get a clearer idea of just what he was looking at, but he would need to investigate further. He motored straight towards it and then killed the boat's engine so he could carefully inch closer. The strange object was becoming more visible as the boat silently floated over each swell, but aside for the occasional slap of a wave on the boat's side, everything was quiet. The sodden object bobbed gently and Bruce speculated that it was nothing more than a tangle of algae and flotsam that had gotten caught on the mooring, but Sean wasn't so sure. Bruce squinted and he was sure he could make out fine strands of long brown hair being pulled by the ebb and flow of the waves. Then as they drew nearer, he started to make out limbs, two arms and two legs. But the object was lying absolutely still. Sean felt the acrid taste of fear well in his throat. Were they too late? Everyone tried to get a better view of the orange object. It was unlike any sea animal he had ever seen in all his years of sailing in the open ocean. Then he thought he could just make out its small brown eyes. But what was it? It wasn't a buoy or a child. It was a little dog battling the currents and staying afloat solely because it was wearing a life jacket. If he hadn't been wearing the bright life preserver, they may never have spotted him. But what was a dog doing so far away from the shore in the first place? Bruce and his party couldn't understand how or why the little dog had come to be miles out in the open ocean, but one thing they were sure of was that it was very happy to see them. Recognizing his saviors, he paddled furiously toward the boat until he was close enough to be hauled on board. As soon as he saw the bow of the boat come around, he started paddling as fast as he could towards us, recalled Michael. It was Michael who had leaned over and scooped the little dog from the water. After removing his life jacket and giving the little Jack Russell a look over, they were greeted with a welcome sight. The Jack Russell seemed to be recovering well from his sea adventure. Sean inspected him thoroughly until she was satisfied that he'd sustained no injuries. But the question remained, where had he come from? He had no identification on him, so how would they contact his owners? That's when Sean had an idea. She radioed the Coast Guard and he had some good news. The Coast Guard said that earlier that morning they'd had a report of a dog overboard, Sean explained. They asked us to please identify the dog, Robin added. They gave their description to the Coast Guard and it was indeed the same dog and he'd been missing for three hours. The Coast Guard took note of the boat's coordinates so that they could dispatch a rescue team. Bruce and his crew were more than happy to take care of the little pup while they waited. The dog's name was Jägermeister, and he was, understandably, a little nervous after having spent the last three hours at sea. He was shaking like a leaf, Robin later explained in an interview with the New York Daily News. They knew they had to get him warmed up as fast as possible. We got towels wrapped around him and got him calmed down. It took about 30 minutes, Robin recalled. And when the Coast Guard finally arrived, he quickly leaped aboard the rescue vessel and made himself comfortable. But how had little Jägermeister ended up fending for himself in the ocean? And where were his owners? Joey Myrick had all the answers. Joey and Jägermeister were on a boat trip when Joey stopped to check the hull. 
While he was out of view, Jägermeister decided to leap overboard to go off on an adventure of his own. When Joey had discovered that his beloved dog was missing, he was worried sick. Joey was waiting on the shore when the Coast Guard with Jägermeister's new friends in tow reunited the pair. When asked how she felt at the time of the reunion, Robin said, Wonderful. It was heartwarming and heartbreaking at the same time. We all got tears in our eyes. He ran up and the dog started licking his face, Robin continued. We were all crying. It was really a very, very heartwarming moment. It was very happy. Some humans are brave enough to risk their own lives to save another.